Good morning, Merlin. Nice to see you again. So uh, I'm Thomas Abraham James, CEO with Conoco Limited, listed on the ASX. And uh, today I'm joined by my colleague, uh, another Tom, so Tom Sant, our exploration manager. Uh, we are both in Iceland at the moment, in Reykjavik, on board the merchant vessel Argus, which will be taking across to our uh, Greenland projects later this week. So uh, departure is scheduled for then. And uh, here we go. The activities are about to kick off with drilling at Ryberg and at Mestersvik. Uh, Thomas, thank you very much for the introduction. How exotic and how exciting that you're on board um, the, 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 the Argus. Um, <clears throat> Tom, nice to meet you. So, um, both of you, you're on, on board the ship. You're just about to set off. Um, how long are you going to be away for and what's the plan for this project? Perhaps, Thomas, if you just can, can keep us um, at the high level for now. Yeah, so our intentions for this field season are we're going to start at the Ryberg project and it's really uh, working on the back of what we achieved last year. So we've generated uh, a lot of new targets that will be assessed this year. Uh, my colleague Tom Sant will go through those with you shortly, but uh, this was really on the back of the magnetic survey that we conducted last year, which has identified additional targets for magmatic sulfides and most likely for gold. Uh, and then also the, the drill results from last year at Saucy Cap, where we intersected uh, nickel and uh, nickel sulfides and gold mineralization. So we'll be staying at Ryberg uh, until the end of July. And then after that, uh, the equipment and personnel will be mobilized up to the Mestersvig project, which is a, a lead, zinc, silver, copper project. And we'll be drilling there until the end of the field season, which we anticipate will be the end of September, early October. Uh, also, in addition to that, uh, on the other side of the planet in Australia, uh, as, as the listeners may be aware, uh, there's been a, a discovery made by our neighbours to our Mount Thirsty project, so the, the neighbouring ground held by Galileo, uh, magmatic sulphides, and the company is quite furiously uh, preparing for a drilling programme at Mount Thirsty later this, uh, this uh, well, in the coming months. Uh, there as well. So, so hopefully, Mel, and I'll be speaking to you again in the not too distant future about uh, more details on our uh, <laughs> drilling intentions at Mount Thirsty too. So, an extremely busy period of time for the company. Uh, Thomas, I was, I was, when I was preparing for this call, I was actually thinking that we were going to be talking about the Australian assets. So, I've um, I've researched uh, quite a lot of the, <laughs> the Mount Thirsty, the Galileo um, discovery there. Um, but what I what I was just curious about on that Australian asset, it's a joint venture that you've got, 50-50. Are you the operator of it or, or is your partner the operator on it? Yeah, so we're, we're the operator with that project. We're working in collaboration with the uh, building up the technical story at the moment. Uh, the good thing is, is Mount Thirsty is that we do have uh, uh, an abundance of existing data, uh, not only the drilling that's been done, there has been some deep drilling beneath the last right, uh, which we're currently going through and uh, looking at in detail, the geochemistry there, uh, and, but also in the form of geophysics. So we're actually in quite an advanced position and able to critique that in, in detail. Um, so that process is nearing completion now. And Tom, are you going to be out in um, Greenland for the duration. I mean, sorry, Thomas, are you going to be out there? So how, how long are you going to be out there for? Uh, so for this season, uh, I will be out there uh, sporadically. Um, I won't be there for the entire season, as you can appreciate, with activities also occurring in Australia as well. So uh, I'll be, uh, yeah, maintaining uh, my uh, interest in both of those. So I'll be a personality for a while. Um, good, good, good. Right, but that, that kind of leads, leads me on to, um, to address the questions to Tom. So presumably you're going to be out there for the duration. Um, you know, that's quite a long time. Uh, are you, are you, Tom, what's your travel plan? Are you going to be there, out there for four months or are you going to kind of um, do, do a shift in and out? Yeah, we're going to break the work up into two phases this year because, as you say, to go through all the way is a, um, a very long shift for everybody. So um, the work falls naturally into the two projects, Ryberg and Mestesvig. So we'll be on site for six or seven weeks at Ryberg um, for the drilling there. And then the, the rigs and some of the equipment will move up to the Mestesvig project um, during that move. Uh, most of the team will go off on a field break and um, will return around early August 
and um, work through till the end of the season. Right. Okay. So, um, first up, Rydberg, um, can you just kind of before we before we put any images up, can you just kind of outline the the, the drill plan? Um, sorry, well, the, the the plan. How many do you plan to drill, and how much kind of uh, what are you trying to do around the edges of the drilling? Yes, we've got about. Um, we're hoping to drill between three and five thousand meters at Rydberg, okay. and. Um, up to maybe 7,000 meters or so at Mestersvig. Some of those targets are based on previous field work from, um, from last year. Some of those targets are based on new interpretation of, or interpretation of the new magnetics that was uh, flown in last year at Ryberg. Um, up at Mestersvig, we've spent quite a while now compiling all the historical information for the old mine site, surface maps, underground level plans, drill data. So we, we think we have a much better understanding of that area now um, and of the, the regional structures there. So the, the drilling at Mestersvig will be twofold, um, one to test around the, the known, known mine, and then secondly to test along the the structure the mine is on, um, plus adjacent structures. I was, I was, I remember being very struck by the kind of mineral potential of um, the Messersvig area and the kind of the the low risk prospectivity of it. If you know, um, of, of the targets, you know what I mean. There, there, there's so much proven um, mineralization. There's so much kind of inherent uh, de-risking already that it seemed like an extremely um, promising uh, drill target. But um, Let's talk about Ryberg. Um, what are you doing around um, the, 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 the drilling? You, you say three to 5,000 meters of drilling, and you've got all these kind of, um, the, the new interpretation from the mags, um, from, the, from the field work, the geophysics that you've done. Why are the rigs are turning? What are you going to be doing in terms of kind of um, the, the field mapping, more target generation? You know, how, how does that kind of project integrate into kind of a, a, a total exploration program for six or seven weeks? What are, your, what are your targets? What are you aiming to do there, as well as the drilling? I say a lot is going to be based on the interpretation of last year's MAG survey. Um, I can switch to the maps in a moment and um, show some of the anomalies we've got. But the, the survey has been interpreted by an Australian geophysicist. Um, he's got what he believes are some absolutely blinding MAG, MAG targets there. They're highly likely to be significant size feeder dikes. Um, of mafic, uh, possibly, yeah, mafic uh, lavas, magmas. Um, they potentially would have fed the, um, the large basalt lava flows in the area. Um, and they, they potentially are similar to the, the Mickey Dyke system, which we know has got the, the precious metals content low grade. So we're, we're really trying to target the, the larger feeder zones where there's a, a potential for an accumulation of magmatic nickel sulfides. Okay, great. Well, um, yeah, if you could pull up a map, I think that'd be really um, helpful. Okay, let me do that now. So I hope Merlin, yourself and the, um, the viewers can see Iceland and um, the southern part of Greenland there. And um, just as a, as a where we are, I've um, left on the, the local satellite imagery for Ryberg and our license area at Ryberg, um, about 350 kilometers from Iceland. And then also the, the Mestersvig project area, um, a little bit further away um, and a little bit further north. And so just, just in terms of geography, before you zoom in, oh. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies, we're, we're running right. a few seconds behind, I think. Yeah, no, no, no problem. So, the just what I can, um, where Mestersvig is, is, is to the west of that, is that, is that a whole series of kind of um, rivers and deltas, or, I mean, is, is that sea that I can see on the inside of it? You know, it's... Okay, the, the colours could be confusing. This is the Greenland ice cap. This is inland yeah. ice. Oh, okay. Okay. And if anything up to um, you know two or three thousand meters altitude in here, um, an ice thickness significantly more than that. Right. The um, the the white areas on this map are the the uncovered. Um, let's call gotcha. them snowy covered rocks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So okay, the, um, the the satellite image the satellite image shows the kind of terrain we're dealing with a little bit more. Um, 
you know, it's it's alpine terrain. The the mountains are quite steep and rugged, um, separated by some some significant glacial um, well, glacial valleys with glacier in them. Yeah. Um, we're very close to the coast, which obviously makes it easy to access by ship. And um, we have some we have some facilities already here. Um, which I'm just waiting for things to turn on. Um, we have facilities here, uh, the main one being an existing camp on location, um, the Soderland camp. Uh, this has been used recently by, by other exploration companies. Um, Tom was actually involved in the, the setup of this originally. Um, it was used last year to service the, the ScareGuard project um, by one of our neighbors. Right. Um, and the, well, the, the Geology of this area, you know, the the Scareguard project is, as everybody knows, a large large gabbroic intrusion. Um, yeah. Platinum, palladium, gold, um, very large large potential resource there. That's um, that's sitting on the margin of our area with the the Mickey Dyke actually going off that intrusion and coming up through our projects in this direction. The um, the remainder of the area, there's a lot of uh, younger basalt lava flows in the south. And then we're looking at a um, sedimentary, volcano sedimentary basin in the north of the area. And some older basement rocks, uh, Precambrian rocks over in the west of the area. Okay. <laughs> I'll turn on our project locations. So um, just to give a give an idea of those. Um, the, the locations that... Conoco worked on last year were, were mostly down in the west of the area. Um, the Mickey project, uh, Sorta Cat project were, were both drilled last year. Um, the Cascata project more in the center, um, also some, some scout drilling in those areas. But the, um, the, the kind of game changer from last year was the, the magnetic survey work that was done and um, some quite detailed survey work on these three prospects in the west um, but then a, a 200 meter spacing line, a mag survey over the, the rest of the, um, license area, just excluding some of the, um, the thicker basaltic, uh, covered areas in the South. Yeah. So, um, this, this magnetic survey is what the, the interpretation has, um, been working on the last, um, last few months now and has picked out some particular um, targets, uh, one area pyramid, one area quest, and um, one area in the Far East, uh, Kitta Pienik. Um, <laughs> Tom will correct me if my pronunciation is wrong on that. <laughs> but um, these, are, these are very much the early stage projects, which um, the, the MAG inversions will give us some potential targets there. But obviously, we need to we need to prove those up in the field. Um, so that's going to be boots on the ground work. Um, so, so, so that's ground support. Ground truth and those with helicopter support to see um, if the magnetic uh, anomaly is correlates with good looking rocks on the ground. Exactly. We've we've got information already for these areas. Um, mainly on the high resolution satellite imagery. Um, if I just turn the magnetics off, we we have better imagery than this. I'm not bringing it up at the moment because it would probably slow down my system quite significantly. But um, we can see in here just just from the colors of the rocks and the satellite imagery, the the darker rocks, um, the the lighter rocks. This is highly likely to be the either the um, the young, the, the Cretaceous sediments or the, um, the Precambrian basement. But the darker rocks are highly likely to be a, a mafic um, rock unit. Mm -hmm. um, this is modeling up as a, as a pipe-like structure in the magnetics. Um, so potentially this is the, the type of pipe that feeds magma up um, to the to what forms the the eroded um, lava layers in this area. So if we if we look at some of the others again, the the quest quest um, prospect is something similar. 
the the magnetics there this this dark blue area um, this is very strong negative magnetics the the intrusions here came in at different polarities in the, the magnetic field for the earth um, you know we're on that very classical margin of the atlantic um, if you think to the the magnetic stripes down the the mid-atlantic ridge and yep. um, the different polarities so we, we have the same thing in the magnetic signatures um, here in Ryberg. We see features um, intruded in positive magnetic conditions and negative magnetic conditions. So all because this is negative, it's not a negative sign. It just it's, means it's, it's, it's strongly negative, just as valid as a strongly positive target. You know, it's the, it's the stuff in the middle we don't want. So it's, it's, so, not, um, it's not unmagnetic, it's just... And it's got a separate. It's a different polarity to the uh, a different age magnetic rock. Exactly. And the the interesting thing about it is that the um, the Mickey Dike that we were drilling last year that we know has magmatic sulfides in it. Um, that's also a negative polarity feature. Right. So you gotcha. know, this this also helps us to understand the phasing of the um, the the intrusions. Yeah. So again, this this type of prospect for us, you know, it models very well in the mag inversions as a pipe-like body. Um, potentially, it's the the bigger feeder underneath the um, the lava fields. Um, so again, it's it's a case of boots on the ground, um, fly in and take a look. And um, um, you've got another one as well. With the half you the pyramid one. Um, we have the the pyramid projects a bit further to the north. It's between our Sorte Cap project and um, Cascata, which we both drilled last year. Um, pyramid, something that the the team has noticed in the past and flown over it while going between the projects. It sits right in the middle of a couple of large glaciers. Um, it's quite a hillside. Um, it has a lot of iron oxide gossonous colors on it. And the, the, the geologists have noted this. Um, haven't had time to stop there in the past, but the, the magnetics in this area, uh, when, the, when the geophysicist saw this magnetic um, signature, he said it's one of the, the strongest anomalies he's ever seen. So again, he's, he's modeled that. The, the 3D inversion work again shows a, um, the suggestion of a, a pipe-like body under here, um, a potential feeder zone again. So, it's, um, a, it's, a, it's a diamond fields uh voice bay kind of moment isn't it um whether they, 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 well, I mean, they, they, they were flying in helicopters over it and they noticed the the the, the goss and they they, they noticed the the the, the, the the coloration and they stopped the helicopters and i mean they were looking for diamonds and they stopped and said oh look we've got some up from afix we we'd all love to hope we're in that situation you know but this this really yeah. is the type of the world where that can happen yeah you know, the the there hasn't been much geology work done here in the past. Um, what was done in the past was done a, a lot of it on foot, um, you know, limited opportunities to, to look around. And the, um, you know, we, we are a, an unfortunate benefit of glaciers uh, melting back as well. Um, you know, there is there's significantly more rock exposed than it was 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago when a lot of the original geological mapping took place. Yeah. So um, we really are in um, in some virgin territory here, and um, as you say, it's it's as simple as spotting gossons and um, hoping one of them pays off. Well, um, thank you for showing me the kind of the, the, the grassroots stuff and the greenfield stuff. Could you can you go back to that map and could you um, show me where you're putting the three or five thousand meters? Um, you know, okay, where, 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 you... Where, where the drill is going to go? Right. So if we're if we're back on the map there, we're um, we're planning to follow up. Uh, well, not really follow up. We're we're planning to do more drilling at the Mickey Dyke. Um, if I just turn on last year's drilling when I can find it. Yeah. Last year's drilling targeted um, mainly targeted EM anomalies um, in the district of the Mickey Dyke, and um, we ended up hitting hitting sulfide mineralization, um, which was a cause of the EM anomalies. Um, but they were actually outside the dike. And the, the drilling last year didn't actually get to penetrate the dike. Right. Um, we know a little bit more about the dike now. We, we know a bit more on the, um, the dip of the dike. We, we have this, this high-resolution mag that really helps nail the boundaries of it. 
Um, we have the previous rock sampling um, that the guys have done in the past, uh, which is highly concentrated on the margins of the dike. So our, our drilling this year will will have two types of target on a dike. We're, we're looking for magnetic anomalies within the dike, um, which could indicate something different within a local sector of the dike. And then we're also going to be drill testing where we've got some of the best geochemistry from the, the rock samples in the past. Yeah. So um, these magnetic anomalies down here, for example, um, on the margins of the dike, um, these will receive some exploratory drilling. And um, further north up the dike, where we have um, some of the better rock sample grades, um, these are surface samples um, with palladium and nickel values in them. Um, and we intend to intend to get some drill rigs in here and try and test the full width of the dike. Um, basically, drill it from above the hanging wall, drill through the entire section of the dike through the foot wall, and make sure we can try and understand those contacts and um, have the best chance of seeing anything within the dike. Yeah. So, so kind of perhaps a series of a fence across the, uh, across the dike there. Um, it's probably going to be a couple of locations with one or two holes in each location. Yep. Yeah. Uh, one of the other areas is follow up at the Sorte Cap area. Um, obviously, we have the the gold numbers that were announced um, earlier this year. You know, we have um, gold in the rock samples from the past. If I just turn off the uh, magnetics image, um, you know, for the for the viewers, any of the um, magenta colours on the rock samples here were above half a gram gold. So, um, you know, that's quite a significant number in exploration, um, half a gram to a gram. It's similar to what we were sniffing in the drill core of um, sort of cap number three hole last year. Um, obviously, sort of cap number three had a 40-odd um, gram sample in there as well, uh, one metre at um, 42 grams. So one of our targets there is following up that type of material, seeing if we can um, expand on that. But yeah. also at sort of cap, it's, uh, it's, it's two prospects for the price of one. Um, we have the, the gold mineralization within the basement, um, potentially orogenic style, we're hoping. I've just switched the rock samples there to the nickel numbers instead. You know, we're getting 0.1 nickel and above in an area in the north of the prospect in the rock samples. Mm. Um, we're aware of some Gossinus areas in north up here as well, um, but the drilling last year was targeted on earlier geophysical um, data, and um, we we drilled the geophysics rather than drilling the Gossin, which um, is something we'll go back and um, we'll review this year. What did the reinterpreted mag uh, um, point to when you had done that? When we had the detailed mag. The, the mag here shows some larger structures that we, we might be able to use to um, zero in on a little bit. Um, but it is quite quite noisy magnetics in the sort of cap yeah. area. So, um, you know, having having iron oxides on surface, um, you know, it's, it's um, let's call it a direct indication rather than the indirect you get with magnetics sometimes. So... Yeah. Um, we're, we're hoping that will give us something um, something interesting to, to follow up with a drill straight away. The um, the other drilling in the area, we're reserving some meters for the Cascata area. Um, Cascata last year was drilled through a, a sequence of um, volcano sediments, volcanoclastics, um, which had some sulfide mineralization in them, low lead zinc numbers. Um, potentially um, uh, a, a massive sulfide type of system, just um, the margin, something weak, something distal, who knows. Um, but the bottom of the drill holes at Cascata went into what appeared to be a, a large diuretic um, intrusion. Um, both Thomas and myself have worked on a scare guard project in the past. Um, the rocks that were coming out of the, the bottom of the Cascada holes are um, the spitting image of the um, Gabroic intrusions you see in Scareguard. Um, this, this, this hasn't been mapped in the Cascata area um, too much in the past, although there have been, there have been some field visits which have found 
Um, I've actually got them turned on on this map. Turn, found igneous layering um, in the area um, to the west of Cascata. And again, the you know combining that that observation of igneous layering and the academics who believe that to be part of a a large um, layered intrusive body, and um, what we're seeing in the the base of the drill holes at Cascata, and we're we're talking a, a couple of hundred meters intersection um, within that layered intrusion style gap rows. So potentially here we're we're hoping we've we've maybe tagged. Um, something significant. We we know we've got Scareguard not a million miles away. Remind me of the um, remind me of the, the the grades and the the target style at Scareguard. The target style at Scareguard would be um, we're talking uh, a a couple of grams um, palladium equivalent um, across a very very large distal extent. Um, so it's it's um, several reefs of mineralization within the layered intrusion. Um, there's kind of a probably about a 70 meter zone that has uh, several reefs in it. Some of them higher grade in gold. Some of them higher grades in the palladium. And um, what's happening with Scareguard at the moment? You know, what, what uh, is it moving forward? Well, the Scareguards are competitors, obviously, or our neighbours. So um, we we don't know all the full details of it. It was drilled last year by Major Precious Metals. Um, they they had four rigs on the program, um, drilling. Um, I believe it was six, seven, eight thousand meters or so, roughly. But um, that that's more their story to tell than ours. Um, I believe they are currently working on a resource update for it. Okay, I'm just going to look up their market cap. What does it say? It was Major Precious Metals. That's correct. Major precious metals corp. And the Norwegian listed. Is that them? No, they're they're Canada listed. Um they're on the mm -hmm. um the Neo exchange. Um we'll come back to that in another okay. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that separately. But um, let's talk let's shift quickly to my suspect. So the first six or seven weeks you've got on the right bow, you're drilling 3,000 metres, maybe 5,000 metres. If you get some good holds, I'm sure you'll kind of um, push it on and out. You're ground truthing the, the new um, areas that have been picked up in that magnetic survey. So you, you're going to be flat out, you're going to be pretty busy. Then you um, go on a certain beach for two weeks and drink a pina colada and um, say hi to the family. And then you go back to... Um, then you back it up to um, Meistersvik. That's correct. Hopefully everyone comes back refreshed and um, ready to drill as much as possible a second time. We have more um, advanced information for Meistersvik, especially in the mine area, um, which is something our geology team's been putting together over the last few months from the old reports. And, um, you know, it's, it's a true geodetective story. Um, you know, we've we've got maps going back to the 50s when the mining was done. Um, it's putting all that information together, um, the the area of the mine, the the structures along there, the mineral occurrences within the district. Add into that some of the more recent um, research done by the um, geological survey teams, um, trying to understand the stratigraphy for the area, um, the structure for the area. And um, looking, I say, not only what is at the mine site itself, but what is in the district. Yeah. The um, the mine site operated in the 1950s and 60s, and um, they they did carry out a little bit of exploration in the area, but they they made a discovery not too far away, um, the the Malmberg um, deposit, which is a porphyry molybdenum um, style deposit. Um, quite a significant resource of molybdenum, and um, again, currently yeah, the the investigation of another neighbouring company. And when when that discovery was made, really all exploration in the district shifted to the the local exploration on that Malberg project. So there's there's not been much exploration outside um, outside the Malberg project for the last um, fifty odd years, probably. So um, what's, the, what's what's the distance between that porphyry and the lead zinc. Let me just um, bring up the map again quickly, and um, that can explain things. So, um, 
and going back to the the uh, the the Mestesig area up in the north, and um, it's a different different style of land up here as well. Where we do have alpine areas, but we also have um, more kind of um, I wouldn't call them rolling hills, but um, you know they're things you can walk up and down <laughs> rather than things you need to climb up and down. Yeah. So, uh, the the license outline you can see the um, the ground we've got in here. Um, but there is one gap in the center here. So the, the area I'm circling at the moment is uh, a third party license. And um, that's where Malmberg sits right on the very southern margin of that license. So yeah. that's the, uh, the, the porphyry molly system. So our, our focus this year will be more in the north area. Um, this is a Bly Clippen mine, the, um, the old lead mine. Um, Bly Clippen pretty much means um, lead rocks. Uh, tells you all you need to know. You know, we're going to be focusing on this area based on the the mine data around Bly Clippen itself and the the historical maps. Um, what I've got on here is all the the lead, zinc, and copper mineral mineral occurrences that are scattered through this area. This is about a thirteen kilometer zone here from the Bly Clipper mine down to a prospect we called uh, Sorteberg. And um, that entire structure is potentially uh, mineralized. Are these, uh, am I looking at two sub-parallel um, northwest southeast dipping um, striking structures? Uh, you're you're or, probably or, looking at, at multiple um, northwest southeast dipping structures. We we know the Bly Clipper mine is, is on a major of... Um, uh, it's a it's a fault hosted um, quartz barite vein system with massive sulfide mineralization on it. We we know very similar mineralization occurs 13 kilometers south um, at uh, Sorteberg. Uh, we have parallel parallel vein systems coming through the higher ground. Um, again, plenty of old observations of um, lead and zinc on those. Is there a silver component in this? There is a, a small silver component, yeah, it would be a, a credit in there anyway. Right. Um, but it has been it has been tested for. You you've 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 checked that. Uh, one moment, I'm just getting information from Thomas here. <laughs> so uh, previous samples have gone up to three hundred grams silver. Well, perhaps a question for both of you. I mean it, what was it? What was it regularly analysed for? I mean, because because in the past, you know, there have always been problems with kind of silver recoveries, and um, um, it, it perhaps you know, if it was principally being mined for the lead and for the zinc, then perhaps the silver was overlooked. It's just it's just a, a question. It might have been included in the in in the analysis. It might not. I mean, I don't know if you if you know whether it's been looked at or whether it hasn't been looked at. Uh, yes, we, we've uh, with previous years was it 2020 when we went out there uh, with one of the parallel veins, the one that Tom pointed out to the east. That one we're getting copper values as well as uh, quite significant silver. So with the historic data, uh, what they were producing was a, a lead and zinc concentrate. So roughly uh, the ore itself, nine percent uh, lead, nine percent zinc, and then they were producing a con and excluding that. Uh, there was no work on the, the copper or the uh, or the silver mm. that's there so really this will be the first time when we're drilling this location that will be doing methodical multi-element analysis and seeing what the basket value would be is there any indication from the from the data you've got of as a nation kind of um let, let's let's say the kind of the overall signature is lead zinc but is there a kind of zonation of copper that you can um pick out for a um as somewhere that's richer in copper, can you get some indication of heat or center or distal or yeah, we tomorrow? can. So as you get further to the south, so these, these structures they, they appear to be radiating out from the, the area where the intrusions are where Mumburg is. So when you get further south in our license area, the structures there become better endowed in copper uh, and, and down in lead. Uh, so we do see the zonation, yes. And just from the, the way that the, the map presented, it almost looks as if um, now the, the porphyry center was here, but the structures were kind of tangential rather than radial to it. Um, or, I mean, uh, uh, What's, what's your structural interpretation at the moment? What's the relationship? Was it too early to say what the relationship between those veins sets up in, the, in, in your area, which is actually quite a long way away from Malberg? 
yeah, it is like when you when you get to, so the Mumberg areas tertiary um, intrusions there, it all appears to be related to the opening of the North Atlantic. So the structures run parallel there to the uh, to the the, the coastal uh, uh, coastline. Uh, the, those intrusions really you've got Mumberg as one small component, and then there's multiple other intrusions in that area. We do know that, if, uh, that previous explorations uh, identified further base metal mineralization there, particularly copper. Uh, so it is all somewhat related, but uh, where the mine is, it, it is actually a sedimentary basin, and that basin, the, where the mine is, it's on the western limb of the Graben. Okay, so this is there was kind of ex ex um, some kind of um, extension, possibly with some um, 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 lateral movements as well. What, what's your plan? You know, so you're going in there in August, you've got September and October. Um, have you got a drill plan already set out, or are you going to do some orientation mapping before you've um, finalize the location of your drill rigs. Yeah, we we have some drill plan drill holes planned already uh, around the mine area, um, testing a long strike, testing down dip, um, and testing within the within the area of previous mining to see exactly if there is anything there or not, uh, anything left. Um, Try and try and get some indication of the grades in our own drilling if we can find areas that aren't stoped out. But um, again, the the southern area and the some of the parallel um, zones, um, and an area that has some um, uh, barite replacement in the sedimentary units, um, with again observations of sulfide mineralization. So um, those again are boots on the ground targets, um, which we should be able to work up into drill targets very very rapidly. Um, they're they're not you know they're they're not overly complicated targets should we say they're they're things we we anticipate being able to walk onto and um, site drill rigs very quickly. Excellent. Um, how exciting! Well, that that um, that'll be a fun campaign. Thomas, just coming back to you and kind of let's juggling this with um, the Mount Thirsty um, for allocation for time Sorry. and capital. What what's What's the time frame for drilling in Australia, and 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 how do how are you prioritising that? Yeah, with that one, obviously, it's been quite a strong reaction to uh, to the results that have come out to, uh, from Galileo. There's quite a lot of interest in the company. Uh, we are now working on that drill program, uh, defining it. Uh, there'll be more information coming out of the market soon. Uh, it's, a, it's something that we anticipate we'll be able to achieve in the coming months. So uh, whilst uh, drilling at Ryberg and Mestersweg at the same time, uh, we'll be generating some results from uh, Australia. So as you can appreciate, the, the mobilisation time for activities in Australia is a little bit less than it is in Greenland. So we should be able to get that one moving fairly rapidly. You, you've applied, haven't you? You've done a, what is it? A, um... A POW, what's that? Uh, um, you, you've applied for 2,000 metres, um, an RC programme, which you'd say to, can take up to two months, six to eight weeks. That's um, right, so a programme of work. So so with the, with the state government there, uh, stating our intentions and effectively going through the permitting process. Let's say if that takes us to mid-July. So essentially you could be doing 2,000 metres of drilling in Australia in August as well. Yes, yes potentially. We're certainly working towards that. Uh, busy times. Well, that means that we're going to have plenty of news flow. Um, and Tom, when you, how, I'm so sorry, Thomas, how long are you out there for? Uh, so for me personally, in uh, in Greenland, uh, I'll be going in and uh, staying for periods of a week here and a week there. So really, uh, to impart my my experience in the locations that are going to, but also. Uh, Tom is a, a recent uh, acquisition by the company, our new exploration manager. So. I don't think I should be stepping on your toes too much there, Tom. Uh, it's, it's also good to have a, a new perspective. It really, uh, I have been working in the area for quite a long time, so I think that having a fresh set of eyes is very important. Uh, and then also, um, then hopefully, um, I'll be on Australian shores, which uh, is something that hasn't happened for a few years for uh, mm. reasons we're all aware of. Yeah, great. Well, um, both of you, uh, thank you very much for, for taking the time today. Uh, good luck on the on the drilling. It's it's about as exciting as it gets, isn't it? And uh, I look forward to seeing some of those results coming out. Fantastic. Well, look, Mel, and hopefully we'll speak to you again soon. We'll be sharing those results with you. It is uh, beyond exciting to have three major projects and multiple prospects in each. Is uh, it's as exploration geologists, uh, I think it's fair to say that this is uh, a dream scenario. <laughs>
That certainly is. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.